So um, everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. All right. So thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm very excited. Let me just see. Who's excited, turned on, can't wait for me to get started? Let me see. Good. Awesome. All right. Who's not excited, but you're glad you woke up this morning? Because <laughs> you get to a certain age where that's important, you know. <laughs> I'm excited to be here for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, this is turning into an annual thing where I kick off the new year here in Austin. And, uh, you know, and honestly, when you think about it, I think if there was any great month to work on our business, then working it, right, to set a plan is January. Would you agree? Yes? yes. So I'm very excited to be here. Also, I do want to say this. You know, I get to work with different ed directors throughout the country and boards of realtors. And this board, the staff here, Kalea, they're so committed to your success. They put so many hours, so hard work. And let's just give the staff a big round of applause for what they do for you, yes? Here, let me see. Yeah, we're doing good. Is that better? Yes? Yeah. All right. The other reason why I'm excited to be here is because what we're going to accomplish together. How many of you heard goals are important? Say aye. aye. So I've got some goals. May I tell you what they are? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. All right. By the way, this is happening live. Uh, you, you can actually talk to me. My first goal is I want to have some fun. How do you guys feel about having fun? Good, I'll tell you the reason why I like to have fun, because I don't know if you know this, but real estate can be frustrating from time to time. I mean, I know some of us, we got buyers, we love nothing more than make a sharp left-hand turn, open up the passenger door and let them fall out. It's like, <laughs> see ya. I think, I think new people, they don't know yet just how frustrating this business can be, because the new people, who's new? Like, first year in the business, raise your hand. First year people, <laughs> aren't they cute? <laughs> You can always tell the new salesperson they're the ones still smiling. They're like, yes, here's my card. I passed the test. <laughs> Second time. Um, so we need to laugh a little bit in this business. Yes? yes? The other reason why I like to have fun, because I remember what it used to be like going to seminars, sitting in your chair. I used to be like this. Go ahead, Mr. Speaker. Mrs. Speaker. I dare you to motivate me. And then I figured out the value one gets out of a seminar isn't really what's being set up front, but how it's being what? Help me out. Heard, received, listened to. So instead of you and I wasting time checking each other out, you know, you seen if you like me and me seen if I like you. I think if we just start off liking each other right from the beginning, we'll get a lot more value. Yes? yes. So what's our first goal? To have some what? Fun. Second goal, just as important, is I want to share some tips, techniques, thoughts, concepts, whatever you want to call it. So you can make some more. What's that word begins with an M? Money. How many like to double your income this year? Let me see. Awesome. Good, good. H how many like to have income uh, this year? How many of you know what income is? The, the new people, I don't know, but I'm still excited. Here's why I say that, because real estate truly is an equal opportunity profession. Doesn't matter what you did before real estate, whether you're in the witness protection program or not. You can make as much or as little, as long as you do the right activities. As a matter of fact, if you met me when I first got into real estate, you would not have thought I would have succeeded because you had to picture this, 19 years old when I started, Long Island, New York, and I walked into my first office, picture this, I had white capizios on my feet. <laughs> do you know what those are, capizios? The mothers do, guys, they don't. Guys, those are dance slippers. I wore them as everyday shoes out in the street, and they were white. But it gets better. I had leather pants on. Yeah, yeah. I had rings on, sunglasses. I walked in and was like, hey, how you doing? Right? <laughs> my, but my first six months, I sold a lot. I did. I, I, I sold my car, my furniture. <laughs> and I was like, I better learn this business, you know? So I went to seminars and training programs. Any chance I had to invest in, not CDs, back then it was cassette tape. I, I would, because I, I figure, why reinvent? One audience said, you mean 8-track? And I'm like, no, I'm not that old. But anyway. <laughs> so, uh, and after a while, I was doing six transactions a month as an agent. How many say that's not too shabby? Then I got into speaking and training. And then um, I, I met this guy by the name of Floyd Wickman. Does anybody know that name, Floyd? Yeah. One of the best speakers and trainers in our business. He was my mentor. He taught me a lot about training salespeople, because speaking and training are two different things. And uh, but then I went out on my own. Let's see, in 1993, I created the first year-long coaching and training process. 
where our agents work on their business every 30 days, once a month, because if you improve 10% a month, how, many, how much is that in 12 months without compounding, right? 120%. So our power agents, the average power agent starts 15 transactions a year, but 12 months later they're doing 35, so they more than double. Is that pretty good? Yes? People say, but show me the money. So we track this. Our average power agent generates an additional 33,000 over their previous year. How many like to make an extra 30 grand this year? Say I. Yeah. I didn't even finish the sentence. And this guy was like, yeah, me. So anyway, this program put me on the map. I started in 1993. And um, after several years, I get a phone call from this book publisher, McGraw Hill. And they asked me to write a book for agents. I had no intentions of writing a book. I don't see my, you know, I went to college for a year. And I was a theater major at that. So the thought of being an author, I, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I came out with this book over 13 years ago, How to Become a Power Agent Realist. I'm very proud to say, even though this book is 13 years old, if you go to Amazon, this is still in the top 1% of all books sold to realtors on Amazon. Is that pretty cool? Yes? Yeah. So I'm famous. <laughs> Do any of you have a copy of this book? Does anybody? Uh, just one, two, three. Okay. Well, <laughs> obviously it's not a bestseller here, <laughs> but on Amazon it's kicking butt. All right. So you guys ready to learn something? Yes? Yeah. All right. Everybody, jot this down. Here's the first thing I want to cover with you, and that is, oh, let's skip that. Uh, focus on building listing inventory. Everybody, focus on building listing inventory. I I'm driving the, the video guy crazy because I'm walking out of the camera shot here for a second. And uh, by the way, we're recording this. Everybody, ooh. So make sure you uh, respond a lot and laugh uh, <laughs> so we get a good video. Focus on building. What's the most important word in that sentence? Focus? Listings. listings? That's good. Listings is good, but that's not it. Building, very good, but that's not it either. Now listen, there's only two words left. <laughs> On! Okay, I have to leave now. Everybody, do me a favor. Circle the word inventory, please. Circle the word inventory. By the way, I haven't told this, this joke in a while. Can I tell you a joke about focusing? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. This, one, this guy, he was extremely overweight. He tried every workout program and diet, and he just couldn't lose the weight. Really big guy. So he goes to his minister, and he said, will you please help me? And he said, are you serious about losing the weight? He said, yes. He said, all right, here's what I want you to do. Tomorrow morning, get ready. Put your jogging sneakers, jogging pants, jogging jacket. Be ready by 7 a.m. Well, the big guy said, I tried jogging. It doesn't. The minister said, shh, just listen to what I'm telling you. So he gets up the next morning reluctantly, puts a jogging sneakers, jogging pants, jogging jacket. 7 o'clock, his doorbell rings. Ding dong, he opens the door, and there's a beautiful woman standing there. I mean, she's beautiful, with legs, and, the, and she says, the, <laughs> the minister said, if you can catch me, you can have me. <laughs> well, this guy was focused, are you with me? He had a goal. But of course, he's huge, he doesn't catch him. But the next morning, he's very enthusiastic now. He puts a jog, a secret jog, pants, jog, 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 like, ding dong, if you can catch me, you can have me. This goes on day after day, week after week. Now, the guy's not noticing, but he's losing a lot of weight. As a matter of fact, ladies, he turns out to be a real handsome looking GQ guy. So he gets really excited because he knows Monday morning he's going to catch her now. So he gets up, he puts his jogging sneakers, his jogging shorts, mm -hmm, a tank top, ladies, he's looking my fine. He, 7 o'clock, ding dong, he opens the door, and there's a huge woman standing there. And she looks at him and says, mm, the minister said if I can catch you, I can have you. <laughs> <laughs> so focus is important. <laughs> now, what I want to talk to you, the reason why I, I had to circle inventory is because in our business, you know, I'm going to make an assertion here that you probably know of some friends, family, because we've all heard that listings are the name of the game. You need to list the last, right? I'm going to teach it to you in a different way you've ever heard before. It's going to change your whole thinking about this. All right? So let's say you've got some neighbors, some friends, you know, they, you have an idea how much money they make. And it might be less than what you make in a year, so you're bringing home more. 
but somehow they seem to have more toys in the driveway, are going on more family vacations. Are you all with me here? Now, what do those people have that you and I don't have? Debt. Debt? <laughs> no, I think we have that too. Some of us have been living on credit cards. Let me tell you what they have that you don't have, you and I don't have. And I'm going to tell you where I learned this. When I first got into real estate, um, geez, I haven't shared this in a, a little while. Can I share something personal with you, yes or no? Yeah. Uh, just so you have some background about how I got into real estate, because it kind of applies to this. So my dad, right, he passed away when I was 14. My mother and I weren't doing good, and uh, we actually stopped talking, and I became an emancipated minor at 16 years old. So at 16 years old, I was working three jobs. I was on social services, and I was still going to high school. Now, let me tell you something. When you're 16, and you're a you know, New York kid, and you know, having your own place at the time seemed pretty cool. But now, you know, I'm, I'm in my 50s. I have a son. He's 21. I thought, how many of you have teenage kids? Can you imagine your kid living on their own, right, hustling, right? My kid, he's 21. I still got to take care of him, right? <laughs> So what happened, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I was a little emotionally stunted growing up. You know, I didn't have parents or adults to guide me through the difficult years of teenage life. So I got into real estate 19, and uh, to me, real estate was not a sales thing. A lot of people get into real estate, they've had other careers, and they come into real estate in their adult life. I started very young, and for me, this was not a sales thing. This was a career. So I took it really serious right out the gate. Are you all with me? And um, you know, one of the benefits of me hustling at a young age is I had to find coaching. I had to find help. To, you know, and so when I got in, because I had no adults. So when I, 19 real estate, I called the Small Business Administration. I said, I'm getting into real estate. Can you give me some advice? Because a lot of people don't know this. The, the, that uh, Small Business Administration, they give you free advice, business advice. So they said to me, this woman I spoke to, now by the way, so I, I, I just, not too long ago, a few months, I turned 54 years old. All right. <laughs> so I'm, you're, you're closer to dying. Anyway, um, so I was 19, how many years is that? Give me the math, 27, 34, 35 years ago. I spoke to this woman at the Small Business Administration, and I'll never forget what she said 35 years later. She said, if you're getting into real estate, you need to have this one thing. If you don't have this one thing, you're going to go out of business. Every business needs this one thing. This is the most important thing a business needs to have. Do you want me to tell you, yes or no? Yes. This one thing that this woman drilled into my head, which is so true, is that every business needs cash flow coming in. Cash flow is different from just money, right? You see, those people we were just talking about, the neighbors, your friends, even if they make less money than you bring home your family, perhaps, the fact that they have a consistent paycheck coming in every two weeks, are you all with me? It's that consistency. Now watch this. If you have cash flow coming in, if let's say your bills are more each month than the money coming in, not, I don't know if you can relate to that. But if the money that's coming in is consistent, you can do Peter to pay Paul for a good amount of time. Now, it's not a great business model, but you can keep a business alive as long as you've got that constant money coming in. The problem that we have in real estate, our money goes up and it goes what? And when that happens, so does our attitude, right? Watch what happens. Let's say you had four sales in one month. How would you feel? <laughs> I love real estate, right? Now, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a surge of cash coming in. Now, when we have a surge of cash, what does the typical agent do? Spend it. Not only do they spend it, they go like this. You know what? I deserve a break, right? I, I've been working hard. i got money coming in. I'm going shopping. Now, next month, no money's coming in. Ah! Now, when this happens... When this happens, you're like, I can't stand this business. I hate my broker. I'm changing companies, right? Because <laughs> that'll always fix it, you know, changing companies. Now, all of a sudden, they pop a couple of sales because a relative buys something. And they're like, oh, right, no, I love real estate. I'm staying in. I'm going to stay with my company. I love the team. I love the team. I love the people I work with, right? <laughs> Next month, no money's coming in. I can't stand my spouse. Get away from me, right? <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you know this, but real estate, we have the highest rate of divorce. 
We do. And I'll tell you why I think it is. It's because our spouse doesn't know who the hell's coming home tonight, right? <laughs> I love you, don't touch me! Yeah. So we're bipolar. <laughs> if you had $5,000 coming in each and every month, would you have less stress, have more fun, and take more risks in your business, yes or no? Yes. yes. So how do we create cash flow as a real estate salesperson? Well, let's look at how other businesses do it. If you were going to get out of real estate and sell something else, what would you sell? Come on now, this is audience participation Insurance. time. Insurance. What? Shoes. Sh okay. <laughs> Shoes. Okay, good. Too soon. Somebody else. <laughs> what? Health products. Health products. Health products. <laughs> I like how you said that. It was so good. Health products. <laughs> You know, the first time I was in Miami, there was 500 people in the room. I asked them the same question. The first thing they all said in unison, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed right at them. They're like, what are you laughing at? It's Miami, you know. <laughs> all right, so watch this. We can do this with any profession. It's the same concept. Every industry, this applies to what I'm going to share with you. But we'll use shoes as an example. If you wanted to sell shoes for a living, you can do it one of two ways. You can go get a store, you get the racks, you get the shoes, and you promote your shoe store. And you have buyers coming to your store to buy your shoes. Yes? yes? There's another model. The other model is you find the buyer who wants to buy a pair of shoes. You stick them in your car, and then you drive them from shoe store to shoe store <laughs> to shoe store. Now help me out. Which is the better business model, sticking the buyer in the car or having the store with the shoes? Mm -hmm. Having the store with the shoes. Our shoes in our business is our listings. And if you have no listings, you have an empty shoe store. <coughs> As a matter of fact, every time you take a buyer out and you stick them in your car, you're literally bringing them to another agent's shoe store, selling their inventory, working for them. Are you all with me on this? Yes. So I ain't saying... Listings are the name of the game. You need a list to last. I'm saying if you have no listings, you are not in the real estate business. That's how you've got to think of this. <laughs> Some of you just got chills. Yes, it should be that way. Because that's the truth of it all. Now, don't get me wrong. You don't have to. See, this is the problem. I had a woman come up this morning. She came. She said, I said, thanks for coming. She said, yeah, I'm here because I want to learn how to list. And, and that's, what you, that's how your thinking should be. But don't get me wrong, though. I'm not saying you have to have a Zappo business of shoes. Can you make a, can you make a living if you own the mom-and-pop store of shoes, yes or no? Sure you can. But here's what we know, too. The bigger the shoe store, the more the money you make. That's just how it is. That's the product. Now, I'm going to give you, can I give you some advanced material, yes or no? Yes. Okay. What I teach in our, our power agents, and I referenced our coaching program, I drill this in, into their brain um, to use this whole inventory. If you create a chart, a listing inventory chart, it'll help you stay, what's that F word? Focus. Focus. Very good. Why did you pause? What happened there? <laughs> so everybody, you probably want to draw this a little bit in your, in your uh, handout. I'm going to try raising this mic just a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't. Testing one, two. No, it's too loud. James, do me a favor. Can you just ask him to bump up the mic just a little bit, please? Because I can tell I'm going to lose my voice. Um, okay, so gang, here, this is how it works. January, February, March, April, May. Okay, I, hear, I got it. Thank you. I forgot the video guy. Thank you. It's good. It's good. Um, January, February, March. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what was that? All right. Well, hey, by the way, you guys got the best coffee of any board I ever went to. Well, you got six assortments, you got tea, you got a little pods. Very nice. All right. This, so January, February, this is the months. This over here is how many listings you currently have listed. Now, here's how this works. Let's say, because the whole focus is on inventory. Let's say you've got six listings in your inventory. And let's say at the beginning of January, four of them go into contract. Now, if you had four go into contract in January, how would you feel? You'd be excited, right? 
But watch what just happened to your shoe store. Now watch, it's very powerful. See, what happens when you and I have sales, a good month like four listings sell, we usually will take our foot off the gas, start spending the money, but if you look at your business this way, now here's what'll happen. You'll have four sales say, wow, that's great, but wait a second, I may have a problem. Because if you don't restock your shelves after, watch this, this is a beautiful part. After those four listings close, you'll have a surge of cash. Yes? yes. But after the surge, that's what's going to happen to your cash flow. What's brilliant about what I'm showing you, this is telling you. If I change the name of this, I change the cash flow chart. But it's telling you what your cash flow is in the future. It's a delayed reaction. Is this making sense here again? Yes? yes. So if you start charting out your available inventory, and what I want you to do is focus on inventory, not getting listings. So let's say, uh, now it's a little bit too loud to bring it down just a notch. Because I can't do it over here. I'm, I'm on zero over here. Okay, so now let's say you've got two listings in your inventory. You want to get it up to four. How many do you need? <laughs> Am I going too fast for you? You know, I'm trying to keep it single digits to make it easy for you. Let's try it again. Watch this. You've got two listings in your inventory. You want to get it up to four. Everybody, how many? Two. Very good. Now pay attention. Math's gonna get hard. I'm gonna add some. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add some traction, which is actually algebra. All right. Now, if while you're going for these two listings, one of these goes into contract, how many do you need? Very good. So here's the point. We're not getting listing inventory, or getting listings. We're building inventory every month. And if you think this way, you've got to restock as things sell off. Now let me show you something else over here. Oh, by the way, just to finish that point. If let's say that's what your inventory chart looks like, I guarantee you that's what your cash flow is going to look like this year, over the next 12 months. Now let's really bring this home. Let's say, um, let, what's the average commission here? When something sells, how much money do you make? What's the? Five, not percentage, five grand, 10 grand? Okay, 24 grand? Where the hell are you from? <laughs> you move there. All right, now, let's, let's, use, a, uh, let's use a low number of $5,000, just so people can appreciate this. Would you like a business model on how to make an extra $100,000 this year, yes or no? Yes. Here's what I want you to do. That first sentence we wrote down, focus on building listing inventory, I want you to add on to the sentence. So now it's going to say, focus on building listing inventory by one a month, by one a month. So jot that down, add it on to the sentence. Focus on building listing inventory by one a month. Now, here's what we're going to do. For you to really appreciate this model, I'm going to ask you to uh, role play with me. Can you do that? Yes? yes? All right, good. Right now, I want you to pretend you have zero listings. Can you do that? <laughs> Some of you are like, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I'm right there with you. If let's say you leave here today more committed than when you came in, you stay focused, you work, you shake the trees. In 30 days, can each and every one of us in here get one listing in the next 30 days? Yes or no? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Good. Let's do that again. So now we go to month two. We shake the trees, work a little bit harder. How many listings do we now have on the racks? Help me out. Two. two. Very good. Let's do it again. So, but this time in month three, one of those two sold. Okay. So now in month three, how many listings do we have to get? Two, very good, because we've got to restock the one that's sold plus one more. So at the end of 12 months, <clears throat> we should have 12 active listings in our inventory. But we were restocking. So give me a rough number. Based on the listings you currently have and the ones that sold that you replenished, how many total listings did you get in the course of 12 months? Call out a number. I'm just getting some water. Call out a number. 22, 24. Let's, let's go with 24. Of the 24, how many would actually wind up selling 
before the expiration date? Probably all of them, right? Because it's such a hot market. But let's just say, let's round it off to 20. Let's say four, you overpriced, you didn't take it long enough, whatever. And plus, it makes the math easy, 20, which I feel like I need to keep the math <laughs> easy here. <laughs> So of those 20, so if you had 20 listings sell and the commission was $5,000 each, how, do the math, how much is that total? There's how you make an extra $100,000 by just building your inventory by one a month. And by the way, we forgot something in the math. What did we forget? Buyers. Buyers, because now you have a shoe store. Now you've got signs. You've got buyers coming to your store. Some of those sales are going to be your buyer selling your own listing. And if you've got a hot buyer and you don't have that particular brand shoe, you'll make an exception, throw them in the car, bring them to another shoe store to pop a sale. So how many extra buyer sides might you generate now? Call out a number. Ten. Ten. Let's just even say five. What's five times five? Help me out. Twenty-five. 25. What was the other number? 125. If you only listen to me half the time, there's an extra $75,000. Are you all with me? So this year, what's number one? We got to focus on what? Inventory. Inventory by how much? One, one a month. month. One of my students, Charles Mayon, one of our power agents. Charles, he, um, this is tell me, he said, I'm one of the top five agents, make a quarter of a million a year in income. That's after the broker takes their cut. So that's pretty good income, yes? Yeah. And um, the average sales price, $450,000. Now, the reason why I'm showing you his testimonial is because here's what uh, Charles does. See, what's really cool about what he does is he makes a quarter of a million a year working 10 months out of 12. See, what Charles does is he takes two months off. He takes his wife, the kids, the family. They go to Greece for two months. Now, some of us can't even imagine taking two days off. Forget about two months. How does he do it? Well, let's go back to the shoe store analogy. If a shoe store owner was going to go to Greece for two months, would they shut the store down for two months, yes or no? No. no. What would they do? Come on. They have systems. They'd have a manager run the store for them. So they can be in Greece creating memorable moments with the family and still be generating cash flow. See, if you have inventory, you can be in this class, learning skill to improve your business, and still be making money at the same time. That's time management. So now if we're going to do that, we need to prospect. So everybody jot that down. This is the second thing. And jot it down the way I wrote it as an affirmation. I need to prospect. Because this is the biggest challenge that agents have in our business. Most agents, I mean, you can't listen. You can't, you can't hope and wait for a homeowner to parachute into the middle of the office with the listing agreement filled out. <laughs> I know some of you have been waiting. It ain't happening. So what we need to do is go out there and be the cause of our business. I'm going to be speaking uh, next week. I'm going to Vegas. I'll be one of the keynote speakers for the leading real estate companies of the world. I'm also going to be doing a session with the agents. I've been thinking about it. You know, people don't realize sometimes us speakers will be working on a seminar weeks, in some cases months before. We're thinking about it, thinking about it, writing notes. At least that's what I do. And one of the things I was thinking about is, you know, how powerful this is about prospecting. That you're either at the, at the effect of your life or you cause your life. And in real estate, how we cause and not be a victim, how we cause it is this one right here. You got to be aggressive with yourself. You got to push yourself to shake the trees. That's, that's how important this is. Now, let's take a look at all the different places that we can generate listing appointments. Do me a favor, call out some places that we can generate listing leads. Just call out some. Expired. Grocery stores, expireds, open houses. church, open houses. Fizbo. What? Social media, Fizbo. Fizbos, good. Let me, sphere, very good, all good stuff. Now, if you pick a monitor or a screen, there's so many here. <laughs> I'm not used to that either. Okay. If you pick a screen, you'll see I split the, the, the screen in half. There's the left side, the right side. The right side has a money sign. There's a reason for that. And that's because I prefer the right side over the left. Because the right side is either, well, you'll see in a minute. So let's look at the left side first. Social media. 
Social media, does that work, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, it does work. I didn't say the left side doesn't work, but it's not as good as the right side. So you got social media, you got mailings. Taking a bunch of addresses, mailing out a bunch of stuff. Works. Door knocking, works. Uh, advertising, works. Self-promotion, works. It all works, referrals and past clients. But everything on the left side is, is not nearly as good as the right side. The right side has 10 times better return for time and money invested. What's missing up on the screen, gang? You actually called it out. What's missing? No, nope, that would be on the left. That would be past clients or referrals. That kind of falls in there. Expired. Very good. Expires. What else? Open houses. Nope. Open houses. Nope. Fisbos. Yeah, for sale by owners. Watch this. Let's just put it up there. Fisbos, expired. Houses for an, an old Fisbos and old expireds. Now, let's just take a look at this. What is the difference between the left side and the right side? Because there's clear differences between the two categories. Okay, first of all, the most obvious is the right side. These people have raised their hands when? Now, now <laughs> saying, hey, I want to sell my house. Now, watch this. just think of the absurdity of this. So you've got people out there like, hello, I want to sell my house. And those agents that will be like, yeah, let me go do a mailing. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm right here. No, no, I, I, got, I got to do some postage stamping over here. Oh wait, let me mail out a recipe card on how to bake a cake. Oh no, let me do an open house over here. Let me run an ad over here. And meanwhile, the homeowners are raising, hello? Are y'all with me on this? Excuse me, <laughs> that hurt my butt. All right. So first of all, Fizbo's and Expireds have raised their hand. They said they want to do it now. That's number one. What else is different between the right and the left? Come on now. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, let me say it my way. So the quality is much better on the right side than the left. See, the left side, check this out. Let's do an acid test. If you were to take a hundred postcards, free CMAs, and you mailed out to an a, a farm area, you just got the address, but I mean, and you mail out a hundred postcards. Are you going to get a listing from one mailing to 100 people, yes or no? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But if you, were the, if you were in Vegas, where would the odds be on yes or no? no? Exactly. The odds would be no. Now watch this. If you called and spoke to 100 FISBOs or expires, are you going to get a listing, yes or no? Yeah. Abs not probably, absolutely. Even if you are horrible on the phone. <laughs> Studies show if you called a hundred people and just barked, <laughs> woof woof, eventually one of them's gonna say, oh you must be a realtor, come on over, right? <laughs> so first of all, it costs no money, that's the other thing, oh that's the third thing. The right side costs absolutely no money. So let me tell you something, <laughs> the left side. I've seen agents get out of real estate, because here's what happens. They, they come into real estate, their broker says, you know, listings are the name of the game, you need to list it less. So the new agent, or the struggling agent, it could be an experienced agent, they say, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna call Fizbo. Now let me tell you something about Fizbo's, because this is my specialty. For sale by owners, they're like dogs. Dogs smell fear. When a dog smells fear, what does a dog do? Attack. They attack. So here's what happens, the struggling agent, new agent, whatever, they'll call the Fizbo and they go, <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and the Fizbo hears the fear. And like a dog, Ruff! didn't you see my ad said no agent? <laughs> well, that's why I'm calling. You see, my broker said I'm the closest thing to no agent there is, right? <laughs> so, so then the agent says, I ain't doing that again. So what they'll do is they look at a top producer. What is the top producer doing? Look at the screen. What is the top producer doing? The left side or the right side? A lot of top producers that are making six figures, they're working the left side. They are working the left side. The top agents, but so here's what the struggling agent does. 
They go, I want to be like that producer, so let me model what they're doing. So the struggling agent will start taking ads out, spends money on a website, buying leads, mailing out postcards on how to bake a cake, getting pens with their name on it, and rulers. And they're spending money every month on this kind of stuff. Are you all with me so far? To the point where their spouse says, honey, <laughs> will you please go get a job? to pay for the real estate business because we can't afford this. And I've seen agents spend their way out of real estate because they're missing something. What does a six-figure producer have the struggling agent doesn't have? Money. Hey, not money, something else I already taught it. Cash flow. That top agent has a shoe store. They've got listings. Every month they know they're going to generate the cash. So they take the money, they reinvest it in their business with client parties, referral mail. Are you all with me on this? You shouldn't spend money you don't have. Let me tell you, Fizbo's and expires. Number one, it costs no money. Number two, you need a cell phone. Number three, how many of you want to get one listing in the next 30 days? Say aye. aye. I guarantee you. If you stop wasting your 168 hours you have each week on doing the other left side stuff and just did the right, if that's all you did, I guarantee you, you're going to get at least one listing, probably more. Are you hearing me on this? Yeah. Everything on the left, every minute, every hour you spend on that left, you're not doing the right. And here's something else. Most agents don't do the right. They don't do the right side because they don't have fear. Fear has them. See, the other one is a passive aggressive, like, you know, mailing out stuff. But, you know, this is a little bit harder. It takes a little bit more oomph to call FISBOs and expires. Now, by the way, this is actually my strength. I have a slide. I'll show you later. It's out of order. But I have a class that I do called the Inventory Intensive. Actually, and we have another program, too, where companies bring me in and do a training for three days. Now, here's what happens. Let's say you're my class. You'll get a homework assignment when you sign up. The homework assignment is to bring FISBOs and expires to class. Then what I do is I have a phone put on the stage, and we pipe it through the speakers. I randomly choose FISBOs from the audience, and I call live from the stage. Everybody give me a ooh. ooh. I think I'm the only real estate speaker that does this. I'll be doing it Friday. We have a class on Long Island. We've got 350 agents in the class. And that's what I'll be doing, is show them how easy it is, because this is my specialty. Now, if I, here's my batting average. If I speak to four, I'll schedule three. Is that pretty good, yes or no? Yes. Now, when I teach the class, the batting average is for every four they speak to, they'll get two. Is that good, yes or no? Yes. So if I can help you right now, quickly, to get better at calling physicals and expires, would you like it, yes or no? Yes. All right. Let me just cover this other thing real quick. Houses for rent? There's people that uh, are part-time investors. You know, they bought one or two houses. It's not their thing. They may have their house available for rent. Now, these investors, when they're bleeding money on those mortgage payments, they really can't afford it. Are you hearing me? And let me tell you something. This is the most overlooked category because agents don't, this doesn't even think this way. But if you call a house for rent and say, I understand you're trying to rent your house. Let me ask you some questions. You ask about the rental. And then after you build some rapport on the phone, you ask them this question. You know, Mr. Hunter, Hunter, let me just ask you. If I had a, somebody who was willing to buy your property and take it off your hands, and the number made you smile, would you consider selling? So you can take houses for rent and turn them into listings that no one is working. Now, the old FISBOs and old expireds, these are not senior citizens. <laughs> these are people that tried selling six months ago. They stopped advertising. So no, it's not on anybody's radar. There's a way to get access to old FISBOs and call those, because some of them, they are thinking about the new year, they want to come back to market. And that's the other thing. Would you agree with me that this is a good market? Yes. And now that the holidays is over, the election's over, you know, there's a lot of things that are behind us. Do you think more and more sellers are going to come to market in the first and second quarter of this year, yes or no? So let me tell you, the Fizbos and Expires is a growing segment. Growing segment, it costs no money, nobody's working, and it's now business, every reason in the world, you just focus on this. So here's the two, let me cover this with you. 
First of all, the do not call list, let me cover that real quick because people always ask me, Daryl, um, you know, can you call somebody who's on the do not call list? So before I give you my answer, because I'm not a legal instructor, I, I have to um, do a disclaimer. I, I learned this Latin phrase a long time ago called anus protectus. <laughs> <laughs> it's Latin. Whatever I tell you, whatever I tell you, you must do whatever your broker says to do, okay? <laughs> it sounds like somebody's passing gas every time. Okay, uh, with the coffee. All right, now, here's what I can tell you is that uh, with the do not call us, if somebody advertised as a house for sale and they're on the do not call us, all bets are off, you can call them. Now, NAR would never say this. NAR says the opposite. So that's why this is not a legal class. This is an aside thing. Make believe we're on break. <laughs> um, the reason why I can tell you with all confidence it's okay to call them is because it really doesn't even apply to us. It says if somebody's on the do not call list and uh, they advertise our house for a set, you can't solicit them. It doesn't say anything about the advertising, sorry. The rule says if somebody's on the do not call list, you can't call and solicit them. We're not. See, what, we're not calling them, selling them stocks, bonds, or magazines. Are you all with me on this? There's no credit card over the phone. There's no transaction. What's happening here is you've got a homeowner who advertised in a public vehicle and said, hey, I'm selling my house. Call me. And we're like, OK. I'm, when you think about it, they started it, not us. <laughs> so, so, totally cool, all right? So don't worry about it. So now, here's the two things. First thing, first thing to get really good, and by the way, I'm teaching. I, I told you I was going to do this. I sometimes forget. I'm actually teaching from this FISBO expired mastery CD that has all of our great stuff on it. But here's the first thing. you got to have a good file system. Now, the reason why you want to have a good file system is because most of us are disorganized. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes. And let me tell you why this is a problem. Let's say, I don't know if your broker ever does this, or your manager, they have like some kind of, you know, prospecting night. Like, let's say I'm your manager and say, all right, everybody, come in Friday. We're going to dial for dollars, right? So, and we're like, no. <laughs> and they're like, but I'll buy pizza. OK. All right, so it's pizza night in the office, Friday night, and we're going to dial for dollars. So we go in there. Now, let's say there's an agent goes in there. They really don't want to do this, but they want the pizza. <laughs> they had a rough week. They got to eat somehow. So they go into the office, but their heart's not in it. So this is what happens. They call the physical. <laughs> Hello. And the physical hangs up. They're like, oh my god, that's so hard. My blood sugar is low. I need a slice. OK. So they take it. They made one call. Now they go for the slice. They got two hands, so they take two slices, and then they go out the back door. And everybody's like, where's Mary? I don't know, but the pizza's gone. All right. So not very good. Mary does not have a good file system. Are you with me so far? Yes. Come on. Are you with me so far? Yes, sir. You know, we're just prospecting haphazardly. Now, say a couple of days go by. <coughs> Let's say this agent or you are driving in the area, you see a for sale sign on the front lawn of a house. Here's my question. Do you pull over and call that FISBO right then and there, yes or no? no. <laughs> All right, some of you BS, but what does a typical agent do? Help me out. What's it do? No. Tell me, like, no, I can't. Yeah, I can't call now. <laughs> my head's not in the zone, right? <laughs> i got to get in the zone. And look at how I'm dressed, right? So what does the agent do, right? They write it on a piece of paper that they know subconsciously they're going to lose, right? And then they say, oh, but I'm trying it so hard. OK, good. No good file system. Now, it's starting to get worse. Let's say after a few weeks of this, this agent or you, like, oh, it's, it's, now it's getting bad. You see it for sale by owner, and it sounds familiar. Like, maybe there's somebody you might have called before. But because you don't have a good what, everybody? Wow. You can't check. Now, when this happens, do you call that FISBO? Do you call the person that maybe you might have spoken to, but you don't remember? Do you? No. No, why? Because you're afraid of them. Embarrassed. Exactly. You're afraid that if they remember you and you don't remember them, you're going to sound stupid and unprofessional. Are you all with me? Yeah. Now, here's where it now got bad. The first time that that happened to you, this happened, so here's what happened to you subconsciously, you don't even realize it. See, when you're a listing agent, 
you're managing somebody's most important asset, their home. Not only that, but you're managing this whole life-changing experience. Now, here's what happens. When, when you go through that scenario that I just said, you say to yourself subconsciously, you know what? I got no right being a listing agent. What right do I have to be a listing agent to manage somebody's most important life decision when I can't even manage myself? Are you all with me on this? And now if you go on a listing appointment, you're trying to be something you're not. You're trying to cover up this insecurity. You have. The insecurity you have is because you know behind the scenes, behind the scenes in your business, you're a mess. And you try to cover it up. And then you feel inauthentic. Let me tell you something. When you have a good file system, you will actually be better on a listing appointment. The reason why you'll be better on a listing appointment is because now when you go belly to belly, face to face with the seller, and you're going to tell them this is what I charge, you'll have more conviction in your speaking because you know you're paying the price, busting your butt behind the scenes to be a good agent to provide your clients with good service. Is this communicating yes or no? That's number one. Number two is a good file system empowers you. I'll never forget, man, the first year I taught the, uh, the power program, 1993, I was in, uh, oh, I was actually teaching in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, great company, Howard Hanna Real Estate Services. There was an agent from Ohio that drove to class every month. This woman, she got, by the way, I remember her name. Now, I've trained a lot of agents since 1993. I can't remember most of them, but I remember Holly Ritchie. Because Holly Ritchie, she came into class, brand new agent, and she held up the, her FISBA. She got seven listings in one month. Is that pretty good, yes or no? So in those days, I'd ask agents to stand up and so say, tell the class, what'd you do? And here's what she said. You gave me a homework assignment, create a file system. I, here's all the leads of FISBOs and expired. And she brought it to class, and she held it up. It was this stack like this. And she said, you know what? When I saw that stack, I said, you know what? Even if I was horrible on the phone, there's leads in there. I can get a listing. No matter how bad I am, there's no way I can't make money because of that. And empowered her to see the business, to see the possibility that exists. By the way, let me rephrase that. Not seeing the possibility, seeing the reality. When you see the reality of the leads that you have, it inspires you to you now, because now all you got to do is get up and go get it and stop being a victim. Are you all with me on this? So a file system will empower you. Remember years ago, there were all these books and articles about happiness, the happiness project, the happiness advantage, the happiness, are you all with me? So I got interested in this, the song, the happy song, so I got into this whole happy thing, so I watched it. Berkeley University had a, a course called The Science of Happiness. So I took the course. I got a 96 on my final. Yeah. While I was in the class, they, there was a study about smiling. This. Very fast. Who studies that? So I Googled and I found another study. And I was shocked. I was actually blown away on how many studies were done on smiling. By the way, I'm, bringing, I'm coming to a point here with file system. So anyway, let me just tell you real quick. You and I have 44 muscles in our face that can make thousands of facial expressions with all those. <laughs> Unless if you had a lot of plastic surgery, then it would only be five. <laughs> have you ever seen some of these people? How are you doing? Great, I'm doing great. Are you happy? Yes, I'm laughing right now. Ha, ha, ha. Nothing. It's frozen in time. <clears throat> so here's what happens. When we smile, we use 12 of the 44 muscles. Actually, you've heard that expression. It's wrong. It takes more muscles to frown than to smile. That's not true. When you frown, you're only using 10. When you smile, you use 12. That's why when you go to a comedy club, you say, <laughs> my face, what? Because you're using more muscle than what you're used to. So anyway, when we use the 12 muscles in our face, it tells the brain something good's happening. It generates the feel-good chemicals, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. And how I remember those chemicals, it spells an acronym. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins spells dose. So every time you smile, you give yourself a dose. <laughs> Without a prescription, right? So anyway, so when I wrote this book, it was very fascinating. And this is the, the keynote I'm going to do for Leading RE is on the smile thing. But anyway... While, so McGraw-Hill said, I started blogging about it, this whole smile thing. So McGraw-Hill said, will you write a book about it? So this book, How to Design a Life Worth Smiling About, has all the studies about smiling and then how to create smile moments in your life. When I was writing that book, here it comes, about file system, I said to create smile moments in our life, we should have good habits, not bad habits. How many days does it take to create a habit? 21 is the expression in sales. 
It's not true. What I learned in science is that our cells die off 1% a day. Our hair, our nails, our skin, 1%. So if you do the math, in 100 days, you're a new person at a cellular level. Therefore, if you commit to something for 100 days, it'll become part of your DNA, if you will, conceptually. right? So the problem with prospect, we say, OK, we're going to focus on building listing inventory. We need to prospect. When, when I learned about in this book, when I did, wrote the book, is that you and I have a finite amount of willpower, not an infinite amount. So when you start to make major changes in your life, it depletes your willpower if you're only walking, working off of willpower. Ha, listen, watch this. Have you ever tried to make major changes in your life and you took on too much at the same time? Yes or no? It's always the ladies that can really, really, because to me, women, no, women are like superheroes. They're like, they are. They really, they work, they say, yes, yes, they want to please everybody. When you take on too much at the same time, what happens? Help me out. You burn out, you quit. You go back to the old activities because it's easier. See, an example of this would be New Year's. What's that? Yeah, you go back to what you know, and it's easier. It's less resistant, right? Let's say New Year's. I don't know if any of you made a New Year's resolution. But let's say it's New Year's, like, yes, this year. This year is going to be my year. Like you're half drunk, you know. Like this year, I'm going to lose 100 pounds by tomorrow. And I'm going to work out every day. I'm going to go to the gym seven days. And I'm going to juice. I'm juicing and cleansing and working out, right? <laughs> And while I'm doing this, I'm going to double my income. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Right? Now, by January 3rd, we're like, you know what? Give me a freaking donut. I'm going to kill somebody, right? <laughs> January 3rd, that's it. No more. Because if you try and just do it at willpower, you deplete it. And by 12 o'clock, you're done. You want to go take a nap. Now, here's what I learned. If you're going to create a new habit, you want to remove obstacles to make it easier. So for example, what's your name? Dominique. Dominique. So I told you guys, we're going to prospect. What's the best leads to prospect? Help me out. Expired. Fizmo's expired. As soon as I said that, some of you are like, oh, no. Like, I don't want to do that right. And that's OK. That's normal. But if you're like, I don't want to do this, and now you've got to go find the Fizmo, reverse it. Like, do all this work. Like, and then you go to the phone. <sighs> oh, I need some coffee first. <laughs> and then while you're making the trip to the coffee, you got to check your Facebook, <laughs> social media. And, and then you never prospect. Now watch this. Let's say Dominique comes in at 9 AM. Dominique, listen, here's what I did for you. I scoured scoured and looked for all the FISBOs in the Austin area. I reversed it to get their address. I put in a nice little list here, and I checked the expired list to see if they were ever listed on MLS. And while I was in there, I pulled all the expireds for today and got their home numbers. So here's all the new FISBOs and expireds for today. And I'll do this again for you tomorrow. Now, if somebody did that for you every day, would it make it easier for you to prospect, yes or no? Yeah. Absolutely. Now listen, when she makes the calls, there'll still be that initial, like, you know, I don't want it. That's normal. That will not go away. But I love what Tony Robbins says, motion impacts emotion. Eventually, you'll get used to it. You'll get past that, I don't want to. This is uncomfortable. But we got to remove the roadblocks by having an empowering file system. Does this make sense, yes or no? Yeah. There's a company that does what I just said with Dominique. And that company is called RedX. Have any of you heard of this company, RedX? Raise your hands if you have. Wow, not that as many as I would think. All right. Are any of you using it on a regular basis right now? RedX, anybody? Being by anybody? R-E-D-X. Here's what RedX is. Let me show you. I have it here because this company, <clears throat> I am a big, huge fan of this company. The reason why I'm a big, huge fan is because they do exactly what I just told you they do. What they do is they go into the MLS of Austin, they pull out the expireds, 
they get the, where is it? For FISBOs, for sale by owners. The FRBs, the for rent by owners. They will give you the list of all the houses that are for rent. Everybody, ooh. ooh. And it actually has pre-foreclosures. Don't worry about the storm dial. That's, uh, it's not a lead thing. That's, a, don't worry about that. Now, the other thing that they're not saying up here, which they should, when you get an account with them, they have in your market all of the old FISBOs for the last six months. Everybody, give me ooh. Yeah. This is gold to me. Now, here's what it looks like. When you log in, you have like your own dashboard. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it kind of looks like Outlook a little bit, but it keeps track of the people that you've called, conversations, did you list it, did you sell it, are you supposed to call back? So in other words, this is like your own database of leads given to you where you can keep track of those. So you click on one, this is what it looks like. It's a little hard to see on the screen, but it has a picture, it has the address, it has all the information. There's actually dialogue that they have for you calling FISBOs, <clears throat> but don't use it because it's not as good as mine. They actually asked me, they want to put our FISBO dialogue in there. I told them, no, it has to be exclusive to my company. Anyway, so we're a big fan of Red X because they give it to us on a silver plate. Everybody, again, ooh. Now, here's how much it costs. It depends on, because you can order things a la carte, like if you just got FISBOs, I forget what that is, I think it's 60 bucks a month, expired, just 30 bucks. But if you did everything, it seems like the average student, they don't pick everything, but the average with FISBOs expires, I think with one other source of leads, they spend about 180 a month. Now is $180 a month a lot of money to get FISBOs expired and something else? Everybody say no. no. Because think about it, if you got one listing that's sold, you just paid for the what? The next five, six, seven years. Said another way, if it took you five years to get one listing that sold, you broke even. <laughs> so hopefully you know, that doesn't happen. Now, <laughs> here's something else. So it's $180 and then there's a setup fee. The setup fee is $150 setup fee one time. Now let me tell you what happened. Very interesting. I don't know if I had said this earlier, but McGraw Hill, they called me up to write that first book, The Power Agent. The same thing happened here. Red X, right, the company, they hear me calling FISBOs from the stage. They said, we never heard anybody doing this. So they flew to one of my classes and they wanted to see me do this. And they were blown away, they were like, oh my gosh. So they wanted to create an alliance with my students. So what I did was, I wanted to sit down with them and negotiate something just for my students. Now you're not a student, technically, you know, a coaching student, but would you like me to tell you about this, yes or no? Yeah. So I flew to their office in Utah. By the way, do you know where Utah is? <laughs> it's not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. <laughs> so I flew to Utah in Salt Lake, City, Salt Lake City, sat down with the owners. My students do not pay. And I said, anything you give me has to be exclusive. You can't give it to any other real estate speaker. Yay. Mm -hmm. My students, they don't pay the setup fee of $150. Everybody give me, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but wait, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> my students do not pay the first 30 days. So now by you just showing up today, I'm giving you a gift of like $330. What do you say? Yeah. No, no, you don't scream. You say, thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so let me tell you how to get this. If you look at, by the way, there's a flyer in your handout. Yeah, the flyer is right there. Thank you, sir. If you go to DarylSpecial.com, they created a dedicated website just for our students. By, by the way, don't share this on social media or something because it's really just supposed to be for my students. Somebody did that once, we had to change the code, it was a whole nightmare. So this is really just for you, so I'm not blowing smoke, so don't share with other people. It's DarylSpecial.com. Now, when you go there, you punch in the promo code. Everybody, what's the promo code? Mom. Of course it is. And it has to be all caps. Now here's what's going to happen. When you go there and you fill this out, you're going to put your credit card number in and all that. So it looks like I'm going to charge you. They're not. Here's what happens. It's automated. So what you do is you try it for 30 days. Now, if you don't cancel, they assume you want to continue. So after the 30 days, what are they going to do? Charge. charge. Well, in New York, we use the term whack. <laughs> They're going to whack your card. Now. Here's what I'm going to recommend you do. After this seminar, I want you to go run to the website right away and don't sign up. 
<laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> Somebody like, I'm so confused. Okay. Because here's what happens. When people like, when they hear free, it's like, okay, okay. So they sign up, but they're not really committed to using it. See, like, look at this room. Everybody look at this room. You see how, you see how this room looks? Watch this. Do you know how many reservations we had? Take this room and double it. That's how many people said we're coming today. Double. I'm thinking, like, maybe I didn't send out enough reminders. <laughs> Can you believe that? With all those reminders, still half would not show up. And it happens every time. Every time. You want to know why? Because the other half that didn't come, they weren't committed when they said they were coming. So I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want you to go there and not be committed to using it because if you sign up and you're not using it week one, week two, what, what are they going to do after four weeks? Help me out. They're going to whack your car. Yeah. I don't know what you do when these things call up and say, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I had a hangnail. I was on vacation. Uh, can I get my money back? Because they'll say no. And you'll be like, oh. and then you're going to talk bad about them and cancel the account and be all mad. And, and you're only hurting who? Help me out. Yourself, right. So here's what I want you to do. Go to the website, check it out. Don't sign up. Kick the tires. Get a sense. Now watch this. When you are ready to start prospecting and calling FISBOs and expires, I promise you, if you do the rest of what I'm going to teach you today, along with these leads given to you on a silver platter, you're going to get not one. You're probably going to get two or three listings in 30 days. And then you know what's going to happen? When they whack your card in 30 days, you're going to thank God that you got whacked because you're going to be a customer for life because you just paid for the next 15 years. Are you all with me on this? That's how I want you to do it. Now, here's the next thing. So the first thing is we got to have a good file system. The second thing is we got to have good dialogue. Now this is, let me tell you something about dialogue. So I want you to really listen because I'm about to teach something different than what I believe in, okay? And this is always hard for me to teach it. I've been teaching for years and I still struggle teaching it because me telling you to memorize dialogue is against my belief system. All of my CDs, all of my training, God bless you. And there's nothing to sneeze at either. All of <laughs> are you okay? Okay, good. No, no, I know somebody who died from sneezing. Yes, I mean, they were in the closet when the husband came home. <laughs> it was in Texas. <laughs> you guys rolled differently here. Anyway. <laughs> so... Um, let me tell you something. This is the exception. <laughs> Calling FISBOs with a memorized dialogue is the exception to my belief system. Everything that I teach my students is not memorized dialogue. And the reason why is because let's say you go on a listing appointment and you're trying to do memorized dialogue. <laughs> the problem is what happens if the other person doesn't know their part? <laughs> Right? Wouldn't that be nice? You go on a listing appointment. Dominique, here's your part. Here's mine. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Now, let me tell you something. I'm good where some of my colleagues are good at teaching agents how to self-promote, how to spend money, how to use social media technology. I'm, my niche is teaching agents what to say, when to say, and how to say when you're belly to belly, face to face with a buyer or seller. I'm the listing and selling technique guy. Are you all with me? Yeah. And let me tell you something. I am against memorized scripts. Here's why. Because in my 25 years, that's how long I've been in this business. No, more than that. Over, more than that, 30. I've been training 20 some odd years. 20, 25 years. And in all my years of training salespeople, here's what I know about you. And, and I am big on building inventory. It's the reason why you don't like going on listing in, uh, appointments and working with buyers is because you feel like you have to be a salesperson on a listing appointment. That's one of the reasons why some of us resist it. See, what we'll do is watch this. Watch the memorized script absurdity. You go take a training class, and they say, here's the script. Memorize the script. And now go do a listing appointment. So now when you're in front of the seller, this is how you are. You're not paying attention. You're not tuning in with them because you're trying to remember what the hell you're supposed to say when they're done talking. Are you hearing me on this? So you're not even being present to these people. 
See, what happens with buyers, there we like buyers because there we feel like we're not selling people. There we feel like we're serving people. Because with buyers, we show property. They enjoy it. They smile. You smile. Oxytocin, one of the four chemicals, goes up, which creates a bond. It's also called a trust chemical. So we experience human beingness when it comes to buyers. All of a sudden, we go on a listing appointment. We think we have to be something different than we are over there. And we're going to try and script them and technique them. Are you all with me? And, and you think about it, if a listing appointment is two hours, there's some movies that are not that long. How the hell are you going to remember a two-hour script? But we try. So now we're in our head, not talking from our heart. It's called human being, not human doing. But we try and do a sales presentation. And that funny gut, that funny feeling you have in your gut that feels like there's something wrong here, I'll tell you what it is. That script was written by somebody else. That's their words, not yours. And you trying to be something you're not is being inauthentic. And that's that funny feeling you've got in your gut, is you're not being true to yourself. Are you all with me on this? My power agents, they don't do real estate. They be a commitment to serving people and not selling, to coach people, not close people. Talk from your heart, not your head. And you will get more results, and you'll feel better about what you do. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, this over here is an exception. The reason why this is an exception is going to sound like an oxymoron. And by the way, let me just say this. Would you like me to teach you today how to do a listing appointment and never have to use a script again, and you will actually list more because of it? Yes or no? Yes. I promise you I'm going to teach you that today. When you hear this, it's going to alter how you perceive and do your business because you've never heard this before. But we're not there yet. Let me finish this. The reason why I want you to memorize the telephone is because it's only going to be about five minutes. And it's going to sound like an oxymoron. I want you to memorize the script so you don't have to use the script. Let me explain. When you drive from your house to the office, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. <clears throat> So in other words, there's a process, just like a script would have a, pro there's a process. Now, when you drive from your house to the office, do you need to use your GPS, yes or no? no. I, I, I hope not. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you are so good at it, some of you, you ladies, you're getting dressed while you're driving at the same time. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you're driving, you're getting dressed, you're putting the makeup on, it's like, oh, I'm here. Like, you're, like, you're unconsciously competent. So it's the same concept when you're calling a for sale by owner is that you know the dialogue so well that if you were driving to the office and you had to get gas, what do you do? You pull off the side of the road, you pump your gas, and then you get back on where you got off. Same concept here. When you're calling the physical, you're talking to that. If they throw an objection at you, get off your path, handle the objection, and get back on where you got off. Are you all with me? Yeah. Now let me tell you the power of this. When I was writing a book, how did Design Alive worth smiling about? I found this woman on YouTube. Her name is Rachel Lust. <laughs> That's her real name. Now, Rachel Lust is a hooper. A hooper. Yes, very good, Dominique. She said it. Who a hooper? But in the world of hooping, <laughs> when you hula hoop a lot, you're not a hula hooper, you're a hooper. Now, I found out when she, let me tell you something, when she posts something on YouTube, I'm not kidding you, she gets tens of thousands of hits. I was like, what the hell? I'm like, I didn't know there was that many hoopers in the world. <laughs> well, I found out they have their own hooping convention. <laughs> what a thunk. Well, Rachel Lust, in the world of hooping, she has gotten the Hula Hoopa of the Year Award. She's been on Queen Latifah, Good Morning America. She was the halftime show for the Chicago Bulls NBA basketball game. In the world of hooping, Rachel Lust is the Zig Ziglar of hoopers. <laughs> so I saw this video. I called Rachel. I said, I want to interview you. Because I wanted my smile book to not be a real estate book. I wanted to be open to all walks of life. So anyway, I interviewed Rachel and because she was smiling the whole time. I'm going to show you the video that I saw. And the reason why I want to show you, this is really short, is because it ties into that whole dialogue thing. So let me show you Rachel Lust. I'm going to talk to you while we're doing this. So hopefully this sounds not loud. Let's see what happens.
Oh, no, no, this is my pick. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say this. That's the class I'm teaching on Friday. 300 people. Look, this is me calling Fizmos from the stage. Everybody, ooh. <laughs> so I got to do that again this Friday. I hate it. <laughs> by the way, that's important. You see, when you see me do it live, I tell people I really, I don't like doing it. I don't. And I do it anyway. See, there's a difference between having fear and fear having you. And if you can get, just be committed to the actions and not worry about your thoughts and feelings about it, like you'll have the feelings, but the feelings won't have you. But anyway, let me show you Rachel Lust. This is Rachel Lust. I want you to see she's smiling the whole time, having a blast. And this has to do with dialogue. So let me uh, show you here. She, like she's just having fun, right? She's having a blast, rocking and rolling, making it seem so easy. She actually travels all over the United States teaching hooping classes. She has her own line of clothes. Now what the hell is that? Who hoops with the shoulder? How do you do that? Now watch this, she's gonna throw it around. Bada bing, bada boom. Just say, hey, oh. She has her own hoops that she sells. Like in the world of hooping, she's really famous now. Now she's hopping and hooping. Look at this, she's hopping and hooping. And she's still hooping while she's hopping. Right? And now, now she's standing still and the darn thing keeps moving like there's a battery in the hoop, right? Yeah, she's gonna do a little skippity doo dah. <laughs> it's like a little Cinderella there. Or it's having a blast. There's the darn shoulder again. Don't do that. I tried it. I got a black eye. Now watch this. She's gonna do what's called the break move. This is the break move. Watch this. Right? That's gonna lean back while she's doing the break move. And uh, that's it. just having a blast, having a great time. That's Rachel Lust, everybody. Pretty good, yes? Now, here's the thing. See, Rachel told me that that was called the break move. Now, I'm sure she has other names for the other moves, right? You know, around the butt move or whatever she calls them, right? Now, would you say she's uh, mastered those moves, yes or no? Yes. Now, here's the point, because if you notice in the video, she's smiling the whole time. The punchline here is because, now watch this, because Rachel Lust has mastered the moves, she doesn't focus on the moves anymore. So now, she can just dance. Exactly. See, in our real estate business, we have moves. Like calling a for sale by owner, doing a listing conversation, showing buyers, coaching them to making a decision, negotiating offers, those are moves. Now, 80% of the agents, the alarm clock goes off, and this is in bed, they're like, oh, oh. Oh my God, today I gotta fix the website, and I gotta sign up on that Red X thing, and my listing book is a mess, but my desk is a mess, I gotta, and I gotta take care of the kids. I'll be like, la, 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 la. And they're exhausted before they even get out of bed, because who would wanna wake up into that life? Are you all with me? <laughs> the agents who are really great at this business, who love the business, that have a career worth smiling about, they already know the moves. So now when they're belly to belly, face to face with the buyer and the hell and the head trying to figure out what to say when they're done talking, they can now just focus and be present and communicate with another human being in front of them. Yeah. See, watch this. You, this is to prove the point. When you know it so well, you don't even have to think about it. The dialogue I teach my students when you call for sale by owner. Hi, I'm calling about the house for sale. It's still available. Hi, this is Daryl Davis, Power Realty. How are you? The reason why I was calling one of your work revoking is selling property. So you are trying to do it on your own. I'm just curious about that because you want to save the broker's fee. Let me ask you this. Where you moved to? Why there? We need to get the buy. Let me ask you this. If I had a buyer who was willing to pay your price, pay my commission, can we work together? It's possible. I'm okay, you should do that. But first, I need to see the house. Listen, you got nothing to lose and everything to gain. After all, you like complete stranger to the house where I'm licensed by the state of Texas. Something is every sport you give. Not to mention the fact that good to five people that you bring for your house. Let me in. It's like letting five buyers in at the same time. Can I come over at six? Home at seven be better. Da -da. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's hooping, right? <laughs> See, now when you know it so well, you can now just let it go, but you can still now focus on the connection of what they have to say. Are you all with me here? Yeah. Now, by the way, that magic dialogue is on this FISBO CD. Do you guys want me to raffle this off, yes or no? Yes. No, I'm still not feeling the love yet. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'll ask it again later. All right, now. Let me teach you something else over here because this is important. If you're going to build inventory, you've got to get good at providing service to your sellers. Would you agree with that, yes or no? Yes. <clears throat> we need to good, provide good service to our sellers. 
great service to our sellers. Let me show you, one of our students, uh, oh, sorry. Great, great service. Now, the biggest complaint that homeowners have about us in our business is what? Lack of follow-up. Lack of follow-up. The agent lives in my house, and I never heard from them again, yes? yes? There's a lot of things that you can do to provide service, but the one thing that I want to teach you right now is have a system of communication with your sellers. This is the biggest complaint that homeowners have about us and our business. The agent lives in my house and I never heard from them again. Yes? yes? Now, this here, let me tell you why this is so important to have a system of communication. See, we've all heard buyer remorse. When a buyer says, you know what? When a buyer has buyer remorse, what do they do? They call us up after they make an offer and they say, I, what? Yeah, yeah, I changed, I guess it wasn't meant to be, right? And then we want to shoot them, right? So, or is that just me? What? All right. Now, but here's the thing. It also happens with sellers. See, if you get a listing, you go back to the office, and you're putting it in, in, in the MLS, if buyer remorse kicks in for the seller, this is what is happening back at the house. You don't even know this. Let's say Dominique or, or Mary, like, honey, geez, did we make the right decision with this agent? Maybe we should have interviewed some others. Maybe we should have asked for lower commission. I love this one. Maybe we should have given them a shorter-term listing so the agent would work harder to get an extension. Now, here's the problem. This conversation is happening in the bedroom, and you have no idea. <coughs> so now you get the list, you start advertising, promoting it, and they start calling you up. They said, when's the sign coming? You're like, I was just there yesterday. You know, all right, can I help you write the ads? And when it starts getting bad because they feel like you're not working hard enough, they start giving you suggestions, right? Like maybe we should do an open house Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 5. <laughs> and here's when you've totally lost this relationship when they start calling you up every time another agent shows your listing oh I think they like it can you call them and get feedback are you hearing me on this so one of the things you want to do is see what I know about you is that you work hard you care about your sellers some of you I know man you have had you care so much you're just, like you'd be laying in your own bed drifting off into sleep worried about one of your sellers <laughs> I know this about you. The problem is they don't. And the reason why they don't is because when you get that listing, you need to keep letting them know they made the right decision. You get married, you don't walk down that aisle and say, I do, that sucker's going to work out by itself for the next 50 years. You better keep selling them on the fact they made the right decision when they said, I do. Are you with me on this? <laughs> it's the same thing. This is a relationship. Do you want a very simple system that every one of you can use that's going to help you get better relationships with your sellers, yes or no? Yes. Jot this down. It's two steps. Step one, you're going to do two steps. Step one is you're going to mail them two letters within the first seven days of them hiring you. Everybody, how many letters? Two. Daryl, do you mean letters or emails? I mean letters. You're going to see why. <clears throat> so you're going to mail two letters within the first seven days. Now, step two, it gets easier. You're only going to have to mail them one letter every other week. So let's take a look at this. Do you want me to give an example of a letter, yes or no? Yes. All right, here. Where is it? Let's say, I want you to imagine, you go to the office, you put it in MLS, you print out, after you put it in MLS, you print out this letter, you send it to your seller. Dear Hana Hana. By the way, don't do Hana Hana. You gotta customize the letter. I don't want some of you to do that and say, Daryl, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Hana Hana, <laughs> well, you couldn't get the math before over here, so I, you know, I, was, I don't want to take anything for granted anymore. Dear Hana Hana, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for hiring me to market your home so I may better serve you. I have a list of suggestions I give to all my clients. These items will help us in the marketing of your property. Try and keep the steps and stairways and holes free of any obstacles. Try and keep pets out of the way. They only distract potential buyers. Turn off the radio or television while the house is being shown. This is one of my favorites. Never apologize for the appearance of any portion of your home. You might point out a problem that would have gone unnoticed. Are these good here again? Yes or no? Yes. There's 14. I only write four. The last paragraph says this. 
As I promised you at the time you list your homie, I will exert every possible effort to get your house sold. At the end of two or three weeks, we'll analyze the results of all the showings and increase. If at that time the response is not what we expected, we'll have to discuss an adjustment relative to today's market. What kind of adjustment am I talking about? Price. Price. Now watch this. If a homeowner got a letter from you that said, thanks for hiring me, here's 14 tips, and I'd like us to meet in a few weeks, is that good customer service, yes or no? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now watch this. How many letters in the first week? Two. A couple of days later, dear Hana Hana, it's the same people. Dear Hannah, Hannah I, why is this? I love this one. I've completed the listing agreement. I've sent it into MLS. It's now on the system, and every agent has access to it who subscribes. In addition, I've distributed a copy of the listing, listing to each agent in my office. I'll make sure to point out all the highlights in the next office meeting. Also, pictures have been taken of your property used in our advertising. Your home will be advertised in the next issue blank. I appreciate your trust and confidence. I promise to mark your home with 100% effort and commitment. How am I doing here, gang? It's the first week, and I'm already busting a sweat. Now, every other week, listen, I just did this, I just did this. If you're doing all this work and the house is not selling, what must the problem be? Price. How many like to have a homeowner call you up, your listings, and say, I think we should lower our price? Say I. They'll do that when you do this. Are you with me? Now, here's the other beautiful thing that I didn't even realize when I created this. See, if you get a listing and you're not doing all this customer service of communication, and let's say you get an offer, now, let's say the offer is less than the asking price. <laughs> you know, an unusual scenario. <laughs> Here's what happens. The homeowner's like, okay, listen, if you want me to cut my fee, I, I mean, cut my price, I want you to cut yours because you didn't do anything. And as a matter of fact, it's even worse than that. Let's go back to Dom Dominique and I. But what's your name? Nino. Nino. <laughs> Nino. Look at this guy, Rico Suave. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, I got a lot of red. I feel like I'm in, yeah, Dominique, I feel like I'm in the UN. All right, so, so let's say he's my agent. He's our agent, sorry. And he calls up and says, Daryl, I got an offer. I said, all right, come on over. I want to talk to you. So Dominique and I, this is us. Before you come over. Now, honey, we're not giving this house away. Right? Our, this right, this, our house is special, <laughs> right? It's unique. We'll it's find unique. The right we'll find the right buyer. We're in no hurry for the right price, we right? We don't need to sell. We so if they, the yes, yeah, right, we're staying. And let me tell you something. You see that stain in that ceiling? If they ask me to fix that freak, I am. Fi I didn't fix it for us for 22 years. I ain't fixing it for these mama look Right? Holy God, come on. <laughs> so this is this is you walking into that. <laughs> Now, when you're like this, listen, I'm working, I just did this, I just did, you're mailing, you're telling them, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Hey, listen, Daryl, we got an offer. Thank God. My point here is, they're going to listen to your offer differently now, because you've substantiated this. You all know this. Their first offer is the what? The best, the best offer. But we try and tell them this, they don't believe us. Because we have to show them the behind the scenes that validates that concept. This is the best offer, because look at how hard I work to get to this. Are you hearing me on this? And here's one other thing. My students say, Daryl, my best homeowners are the ones that change their mind. Because some of them, they take the house off the market, they change their mind. But they also are staying in the neighborhood. And they're saying, boy, Daryl, listen, if you're going to listen to anybody, you've got to call Daryl. He works so hard. Well, they almost feel guilty because you work so hard, you told them how hard you're working, and they didn't sell. They want to actually now drum up business for you. Are you hearing me on this? All right. Now, why letters versus emails? Warren Buffett taught me this. Personalized. It, it's, it's, it's personalized. What else? Nobody does it anymore. Nobody does it anymore. Here's the other thing. It's a subliminal. Watch this. Are emails easier, yes or no? Yes. 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 When you open up your email, what's the first thing you do? Delete. Delete. Now, it's almost like, you know what's interesting? When AOL and chat rooms and emails came out, BlackBerry, that was the new thing. You've heard this expression, what old is new again. I don't know about you, but I actually look forward to my mail. <laughs> I actually look forward to mail. I feel like it's a little Christmas every time. What did I get today? <laughs> 
So here's what happens. Subconsciously, when the homeowner gets a letter from you, subconsciously, here's what they say. Because I, I didn't finish saying, Warren Buffett told me when you're more efficient, you're less effective sometimes. So what happens subconsciously, they say, wow, if Dominique was my agent, I get a letter from Dominique, I open up the letter, I say, geez, Dominique, Dominique took the time to write a letter, sign it, fold it, stuff it, seal it, stamp it, address it, and bring it to the post office. Boy, this girl is committed to excellence. Are you hearing me on this? It's almost like the action of the letter is as powerful as the content of the letter. Now, by the way, do you guys want me to raffle off these letters? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. You're almost there. I'm going to ask one last time, and that's it. But I want to give you one more big thing before we actually take our break, and that is how to do a listing appointment without a memorized script. So let me talk to you about the FISBO appointment. Because this is my strength, is how to list for sale by owners. Now, I'm going to answer, ask you a question. You're going to answer it wrong. And then I'm going to fix you. When you go on a listing appointment, what should you sell the homeowner on? You. you. What should you sell yourself? What should you sell? Help me out. Yourself. You. you yourself, right? That's wrong. <laughs> Watch this. Ladies, I need you to help me in here. Ladies in the house, say hey. Hey. <laughs> All right, ladies, I want you to pretend you're at a bar. Uh, uh, did you understand me? Some of you are like, what? How do you say it here? A bar? A bar? A bar. A bar. A bar. A bar. OK. Ladies, I want you to pretend you're a bar. <laughs> and I want you to pretend you're at the bar by yourself. So you sit at the bar, and a guy walks in. And he starts checking you out. He decides to walk over. He's got white capizios on. <laughs> He says, hey, how you doing, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, ladies, I want you to pretend that this guy goes on now for like an hour, two hours, talking about how successful he is, how much money he makes, the cars he drives, the houses he owns, and how lucky you would be to hook up with him, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, <laughs> boxers. Ladies, does that technique work, yes or no? Yeah. So men, stop doing that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, ladies, if a guy came over to you and he started doing that, how would you feel? Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> Talk to the hand. Some of you just thought of a guy doing that. You want to go home and take a shower right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guess what? All kidding aside, that's exactly how a for sale by owner feels. When you spend an hour, two hours, talking about you, how great you are, and how lucky they would be to hook up with you. Let that sink in. Every time I believe when we go on a listing appointment and we spend that whole time trying to sell them on us, talk about us, we actually give our industry a black eye. Because every time we do that, we're validating the very reason why they don't like us. Because for the whole hour, two hours, who are you making it about? Yourself. Are you hearing me on this? Now, don't get me wrong. We are going to talk about you and your company. But not at first, and that can't be the main thrust of the conversation. Something has to shift first. See, let me, uh, let me ask you this. If you were sick, who would you call? A doctor. Doctor. <laughs> now, I, I think it was in Dallas one time. They said, my mother. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you would, you would call a doctor if you were sick. If you were going to get sued, who would you call? And if you have your taxes done, who are you going to call? Account. Now watch this, all of us doesn't like a doctor, accountant, or a lawyer, but we'll still call these people. Why? Because we think they know more than us. Yes? yes. They, we think they're a professional, right? Yes. So in other words, we have bought into that industry. We bought into the medical field. We bought into the legal profession. The problem with a for sale by owner is they haven't bought into our profession. So the first thing that has to be conveyed, the first thing they have to see value in is the power of working with a realtor, period. Now, if they buy into realtor and you happen to be the person who's standing and sitting in front of them, most likely, what might they do? Help me out. Hiring. Yes, hiring you is a natural byproduct of them first buying into real estate agent. Listen, 
I haven't shared this too often, but I'll tell you something. Because this, I'm being like, no, you know, be real authentic and sharing this with you about my personal life. When, when I, I told you about my mom and blah, blah, blah. So when I got into real estate, I mean, I've been living on my own since I was 16, right? So at 19 years old, I get into real estate. Do you, my father died. Was, do you think I had some emotional issues? <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to be honest with you, I wasn't sold on me. I was very insecure. I covered it up with being tough or angry, you know, because I could prove, hey, I did my life myself. So I had this wall up. So when I went on listing appointments, I couldn't sell me because <laughs> I didn't even believe in me. But I did believe in the real estate industry. I did believe that a real estate agent could help a homeowner better than they can do it on their own. As a matter of fact, I believe that if a homeowner sold a home, they actually lost money, they didn't make money. Now, I didn't realize I invented something through that agony. What I invented was by me selling the real estate industry, there's two things that happen. I could speak more with conviction because of my own insecurities, I couldn't talk from there. The second thing is, and more importantly, I just made the two hours about them, not about me. And I used to say to a homeowner, listen, Nan Nancy, I'm not saying this because I don't want you to listen to me. As a matter of fact, if you don't like me, you don't trust me, you shouldn't listen to me. But you've got to find a realtor, just like you have an attorney, a doctor, a lawyer. You've got to find that professional who's licensed by the state to help people get from point A to point B in their life. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Are you hearing me? And because they trust my authenticity, my integrity, that I cared about them. See, there's a little ditty that I don't know if you picked up on that we teach our power agents. I don't want you to close people. I want you to coach people. I don't want you to sell people. I want you to serve people. When you stand in a place of serving and not selling, it's a lot easier. It feels better, and you actually get better results. Is this making sense, yes or no? Yeah. Now, let me show you how, because I'm coming to the part. I promise you to teach you how to do a listening appointment without a script, and I'm about to come to it now. Are you ready for this, yes or no? Yeah. All right, now. When you go on a listing appointment, you want to convey this first about real estate agents are better than being a FISBO. And there's a lot of studies. Have you heard about Kobe Sembrato? Any of you? Have you heard about? How many of you heard about Kobe Sembrato? You haven't heard? <laughs> okay. I feel like I made it here just in the nick of time. All right. <laughs> Kobe Sembrato. He created for salebyowner.com. This is the first website to help homeowners sell the house themselves. Are you with me so far? The, yes or no? Yes. This guy was considered the Fisbo king. So now he has a condominium in New York City that he's gonna sell it. How do you think the Fisbo king is gonna sell it? Real no, 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 I, he's a, as a Fisbo on his own website for crying out loud, all right? Okay, look at this, this came out in the Wall Street Journal. Founder and former CEO for saleboner.com, Kobe Sembrato, Listed his own property on FISBO sites, but after six months, everybody, how many months? Six. He hires a real estate broker by the name of Jesse Buckler. Now watch this. I can stop the article right there. The guy that wrote the book on how to sell your own property in six months in a hot New York market could not sell it on his own. I'm not the smartest person in the world, but maybe being a FISBO is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. So now, after he lists with the agent, check this out. He gets, oh, if you look over here, multiple offers. Everybody, how many offers? Multiple. multiple. And it closes $150,000 over his FISBO price. <laughs> but wait, it gets better. He doesn't pay 4%, 5%. He pays 6% on $2.15 million. Wow. What's 6% on 2.15? A lot. <laughs> you really stink at math, don't you? Here, six times two, add some zeros and stop until you think you got it. <laughs> 120, the Fisbo King paid $120,000 commission to an agent. He paid $120,000 to an agent. Now, if this guy, the Fisbo King, I don't think any Fisbo should be a Fisbo. But watch this, it's even better than that. He sells it for $150,000 more. So if you do the math, right, don't do the math, I'll do it for you. <laughs> Kobe Sembrata netted $30,000 more in his pocket by paying the 6% commission. Fizbos don't save, they lose money. But wait, so let me show you something else. In 2003, 
2003, oh no, no, sorry. One, uh, in the year of uh, the early, mid-90s, what was the mark, wait, is it, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to remember when the bubble busted. It was 2006. The, 2000, all right, so what was the market back before then? Help me out. It was a boom, it was a boom, right? This article came out by the uh, USA Today. For sale by owners can be a hard sell. Agents, watch it, agents are worth their weight in commission. So watch this. In the hottest market of our generation, USA Today came with an article, listen, even as hot as this market is, working with an agent is better. They're worth their weight in commission than you're doing on your own. If you tried to list a house in this hot market, it was hard because you go to a FISBO and they say, I don't need a realtor, right? This market is so hot. I'll go to Home Depot, get a for sale sign, tie it around my kid's neck and have him walk in front of my house. I'll have it sold in five minutes. Well, USA Today discovered something I'm going to show you. They discovered that FISBOs that sold their own property in this hot, 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 hot market, the average sales price was 137400 Now, the neighbors who listed with a real estate agent, so it's the same market, but these people listed with an agent, the average sales price was $175,000. If you do the math, that means we sell houses for 21.49% more than they're for sale by owner. Now watch this, if that article was half right, half right, we could charge a homeowner anything up to double digits and they would still net more money in their pocket. Are you all with me? Yeah. Now, so here's what you have to understand. FISBOs don't save money, they all lose money. But Daryl, I know the FISBO once they did sell and, and it would have sold what I sold it for. Listen, you don't know. <laughs> See, here's what we do. We make this mistake. We call a FISBO and they say, oh, we already sell, we're in contract. First of all, you don't know if they're lying to you. <laughs> Second of all, you don't know what they accepted. You don't know what seller's concessions they made. The only way you would know what that homeowner netted after, in their pocket after closing, if you checked the tax records after it closed. And I know you probably didn't do that. You have to realize every FISBO loses money. They think they can save money. But we're going to educate them by this. Watch this. If you were going to go buy a couch, where would you go? Come on, where would you go? A furniture store. Okay, good. Give me a name of a store here you would go to. Ashley. Ikea. Ikea. No, higher end. Four hands? Four, wait, wait. Well, four hands? Four hands outlets. Four living basements? Oh, living spaces. <laughs> you know, like, what are these names? Give, give me a name that I've heard of. Lucia. Ethan Allen. That's a good one. Let's use Ethan Allen. <laughs> <laughs> like Karnak, the Magnificent. Okay. <laughs> like, how do you do that? I know, it's so good. All right, now, are you going to get a good quality couch from Ethan Allen, yes or no? Yes. Is this a company you can trust? Yes. Are you going to pay top dollar? Watch this. Do you know you're paying top dollar before you go there? Yes. Yeah. Now watch this. So anytime a buyer makes a commitment to buying couch from Ethan Allen, they're making a commitment to spending top dollar. Don't lose that thought. Why would anybody buy a used, dirty, stinky couch from eBay? <laughs> I mean, think about it. You know, you don't know if you can trust the sellers. You don't know if the colors match. <laughs> it's a used couch. You don't know what it's been used for. <laughs> <laughs> Why would anybody buy a used st stinky couch from eBay? Why? To save, money. to save money. The whole business model on eBay is getting things at a discounted price. Well, this is what you say, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana. Any buyer that walks into my office, they know they're spending top dollar. Why? Because as a real estate agent, every house that I show them has a commission as part of the price of the house, and they know this. But the buyers that are committed to buying a house from me are not committed to stealing a house. They're looking to buy a home from a company they can trust. In other words, I attract the Ethan Allen buyers of real estate, not the eBay buyers. The eBay buyers go to their for sale by owner. That's the model. Everybody give me ooh. Here, think about this. It doesn't matter what we're selling, whether it's cars, furniture, clothes. The person who's trying to sell it themselves, if we see it on Craigslist, we expect that at a better price than if you took the exact same item and you stuck it in a building where there's a business behind it, yes or no? Here, watch this. Let's really nail this. When you leave here today, I want you to go to kellybluebook.com. I want you to type in your car information. Pretend you're going to buy your own car. 
put in the miles, the make, put the VIN number in. Now, when you're done, you know what Kelly Blue Book's going to do? It's going to ask you, hey, are you buying this car privately or are you buying it from a dealership? And you want to know something? The dealership price is going to be 10% more for the exact same car. There is no scenario where the person sells it themselves is going to get it for the same price when there's a business behind it. Are you all with me on this? And the homeowners don't understand this. This is what we have to explain. And here's something else. When it comes to sh uh, selling houses, do we just show houses, yes or no? no? No, we do a lot more. But homeowners, they think all we do is show houses and blow up balloons. <laughs> <laughs> right? They don't realize why. How many hours does it take to get licensed in the great state of Texas? How many hours? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know the answers to these questions. Uh, it's part of their whole professionalism thing. So what did I hear over here? 108. 108. 108 hours. What the hell are they teaching us for 108 hours? I can tell you this. It, 180. 180. <laughs> even <laughs> almost 200. <laughs> See, watch this. We got to tell a homeowner this. 200. 200. Mr. Mr. If, you got 200, if you got 200 hours right now for me to spend with you, I can bring you up to speed. You know, you got to think, if it takes 200 hours to get a license in the great state of Texas, what is it that you don't know that you don't know? See, let me show you something here. The thing about real estate, I want you to look at this picture. This is a picture of a musical. If you look at this picture, who's involved in putting together this end result called the Broadway show? Call it out. Who's, who's involved? Producer. No, no, he, the, you don't see producer in this picture. Oh. Let me get you, let me prime you. Your costume department. Choreography, makeup, lighting. musicians, lighting, Rigging. set design, actors. Now watch this. All of those people, the lighting department, the set department, the makeup, bye -bye, they all talk to one person every day in rehearsal. Who's the one person everybody talks to? Director. That's right. You can't put a Broadway show together without a director. You could, but it would bomb. The result would be a bomb. Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hunter Real Estate Transaction, Great State of Texas, it's the same concept. There's all these people involved, like you as the sellers, and then there's the buyers, and then, of course, there's the appraiser, and then there's the engineer. And some, the title company, now some people, do they use, do you have attorneys in real estate here? No. No? no. Some, right? You know, I found FISBOS, and they say, I do it myself, I got an attorney that'll help me. So if they say that, that's even better because you say, all right, you said you, got, you don't need a realtor because you got an attorney. All right, so let's say the buyer's got one too. And then you've got the home inspector and the bank broker. Now, here's what's interesting. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you as the homeowner would only talk to the buyers and to your attorney. You would never talk to the appraiser, never talk to the engineer. You say to a friend of yours, attorney, they're going to help you. They only talk to the other attorney, if they have one, and to you. They don't talk to the buyers. They don't talk to the appraiser. They don't talk to the engineer. You've got all of these people not talking to one another. And the scary thing is, is any one of these people has the power to kill the transaction. There is only one person that everybody talks to, and that's me, the real estate professional. If selling a house was as simple as putting a sign out in the lawn, you wouldn't have to be licensed by the great state of Texas with almost 200 hours of education. So there's got to be more behind the curtains that you're not even aware of. Do you like that? Now, let me ask you guys a question. Do you want to know the number one secret to dramatically increase your income? Yes. 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 <laughs> you know what? I just realized something. Because you're not responding. It's, it's not you, it's me. I'm not asking the questions the right way. So let me try it again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to know this? One technique that when I teach you this one technique, you're going to want to go on more listing appointments because you're going to get so excited. This one technique will make you tens of thousands of dollars that everybody in this room can actually do this. When I teach you this one technique, the heavens are going to open. You're going to hear angels singing in your ear. It's going to be a religious experience. Do you want it? Yes or no? Yes! All right, here it comes. I bought this book on how to hypnotize people. Now listen. <laughs> this book cost me $250. The reason why it cost me $250 is the same book that a college kid buys. You know those college books, they're expensive. <laughs> when a college kid goes to college to become a psychologist, this is one of the books they buy. I happened to get my hands on the book, I read the book. Fascinating. 
It's not on how to hypnotize people. It's a technique that they use in therapy sessions, psychologists use. Now, when I read this, I had an epiphany <laughs> because it's the same technique that top producers do and they don't even realize it. As a matter of fact, it's the same technique that motivational speakers use. Because when we go to a motivational seminar, do we leave that seminar feeling different, yes or no? Yeah. Who are the, some of those big international names out there? Call out some of them. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar. Buffini. Brian Buffini. Tom, Tom who? Tom Ferry. Good. Who else? John Maxwell. Good. Do, who? Mail Robbins. Robbins. Good. Anybody else? Daryl Dave. Dave. What the hell's wrong with your people? <laughs> Holy <laughs> my God, I'm standing right in front of you. <laughs> your name of my competition, dead people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't even in the top ten. You're like, who else? Let me see. Oh, yeah, you. <laughs> you know what? I ain't giving crap away now. I was going to do a raffle. <laughs> I ain't coming back to Austin no more. <laughs> now, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> are you having fun? No, yeah. All right, good. <laughs> let me tell you this. The person who does this technique better than any motivational speaker, dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's not even a, a motivational speaker. He's a preacher by the name of Joel no, Osteen. Yeah. When say. you look at these motivational speakers, or preachers, what are they doing for 45 minutes to an hour that's changing how we feel? Because this is what we have to do in a listening appointment. What are they doing? Relate to us. Energy, smiling, good. What else? Talking positive. Talking positive. Yeah, that's most, what's coming out of their mouth? Affirmation. Relate to us. Well, of course, words, they're not doing it in mime. <laughs> Af All right, no, please stop talking. Let, 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 no, no, let, let me just tell you because it's starting to become painful for me now. When I tell you this, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, because it's so obvious. All they do for 45 minutes to an hour and a half is tell you story after story after story. They're storytellers. If you look at this guy, Joel Osteen, I mean, this guy, he's either in the middle of a story, coming out of a story, going into another story, and he throws biblical stuff in between. Now, let me tell you the science behind it. When we hear a story, a metaphor, analogy, we can usually relate to it because we have a similar something that we personally went through. But because we went through that certain something, we're not just hearing it, we're feeling it so now they're not talking to our heads they're talking to our what you want to do the magic the secret ingredient to listing more having more fun on listing appointments is you got to use stories metaphors and analogies and I'm not talking about one or two I'm talking about a plethora you want this to be a one-on-one -on -one motivational conversation you're having with a homeowner see I've already given you some metaphors and analogies this morning that you can actually leave and go use right away. What have I given you? What are some of the metaphors and analogies that you can leave and go use after the seminar? Give. The shoe store? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who said the shoe store? Was that you? That's... No, listen. Listen to me. Don't do the shoe store in front of a seller. I don't want you like this. Please, sir, sign a paper. The kids, they got no shoes. I need shoes. They're going to throw your ass out. Don't do that. Okay, so the CEO of ForSaleByOwner.com was a story. Give me another one. Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen. Give me another one. USA Today. USA Today. Give me another one. Broadway Show. Now watch this. Now that I've given it, let me demonstrate. Now I taught the concept. Watch this. Have you ever gotten onto a listing appointment? You're presenting the comps, and you're showing them the comps, and they do one of these things. <laughs> I know that hails. It's not as nice as mine. <laughs> When we had this house built, we used the thicker wood, the longer nails. My house is special. You ever get that, yes or no? Yeah. Now watch how you handle that one. Dominique, let me, can I play with, I mean, role play with you? <laughs> <laughs> my husband. 
Oh, they see how it's Hey, how you doing? <laughs> how about Good, good. Is he laughing? Is he laughing? Is he smiling? Okay. <clears throat> Dominique. Okay. So say my house is special. Okay. Go ahead. Say, no, here's your part. My house is special. My house is special. Yes, that's what I, that's your my part. My house is special. Good, now you have to do that southern thing. My house is special. My house is special. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it is. Mm -hmm. Now, Dominique, watch this. Dominique, let's pretend I give you $101 bills, okay? They're beautiful, they're crisp, they're clean. I said, Dominique, go to the mall, sell each one for 95 cents each. How long would it take you to sell 100 of those? Yeah, an hour. So yeah, quick, right? Let's say I give you the same bills. Beautiful, crisp, and clean. I say, Donna, go to the mall and sell them for 90 cents. Less money, how long would it take you? Less time. time. And if I said 85 cents, you'd say, heck with the mall, you buy them yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> don't do that lap. That was just for my own enjoyment over here, because he's making me nervous. <laughs> um, now, Dominic, let's say I give you $101 bills. They're beautiful, they're crisp and clean. And I said, Dominic, go to the mall and sell each one for $1.10. How long do you think it's going to take you to sell all those? Take a while. Yeah, probably never. I guess what I'm trying to say is no matter how beautiful, crisp, and clean, you and I both know your house is, we can't sell a dollar for $1.10. Okay. Now, let me give you advanced material. When you do one metaphor, you want to do a second one and back it up. Because when you do the first one, they go like this. <laughs> and when you do the second one, they're like, oh, you son of a... And that seals the deal for you. So let me demonstrate part two to the dollar bill technique. Now, Dominique, mm -hmm. let's pretend you're not selling dollar bills. You want to go buy one, right? So you go to the mall, and there's two to choose from. They're both a dollar, right? But this one here, it's beautiful. It's crisp and clean. It's been taken care of. This one here, it's crumpled. It's torn. And it's stinky. Now, they're both worth a dollar. Which would you buy, the dirty, nasty one or the nice, clean, crisp one? The nice, clean, crisp one. I guess what I'm saying, trying to say here, Dominique, is all the wonderful improvements you did to the house doesn't make the dollar worth more than a dollar. It just means it'll sell before the other dollars. Oh. Now, here's the... <laughs> Rico Swami, wait. Here's the best part about what I just taught you. Can you all go do the dollar bill technique when you leave today? Yes, sir. Yeah. You didn't have to memorize a script. Wait a second. Can you all go do the director's technique? Yes or no? Yes. The kellybluebook.com. Yes. I said Craigslist. I don't know if you picked up on that one. Look at all the ones I gave you. I didn't even finish. I probably taught you almost a dozen different metaphors and analogies that you can use, and you didn't even have to memorize a script right here, right now. Are you with me? Yeah. So there's something really powerful about these metaphors and analogies. And uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to go outside of real estate just so you can see the power of it, because it does, it's not just real estate, it's life. Just like those motivational speakers or preachers. So my son, when he was 14 years old, um, he was into that Call of Duty. Remember that Call of Duty? Any of you know Call of Duty parents? It's a video game, uh, video game? Xbox game. My son was also into army stuff, war stuff. So anyway, when he was 14, we had just killed uh, Bin Laden. Now my son, being the cynic New Yorker he is, even at 14, he says, Daddy, I think the president knew where Bin Laden was for a long time. He only killed him now because he's having political problems. <laughs> yeah. So. Watch this. My son was having problems in school at the time, 14 years old, wasn't doing his homework really well, but, but, but. I was on the road, two weeks went by. I called my son up. I said, uh, uh, Michael, I just heard from the White House, they actually let out a lot of that information about the operation. You know, you're right. They knew, the president knew where bin Laden was eight months prior to the killing. And my son says, you see? And I go like this, but watch, Michael. Here's what happened. The president sent drones over to where Bin Laden was. They took aerial photos, they used them, thermal imaging, they see through the building. Then the Navy SEALs, they recreated the compound here in the United States. Then the Navy SEALs practiced drill and rehearsed for all those months, so no matter what room he was in, they could take him out in less than 40 minutes, which they did, 39 minutes with a broken helicopter. <laughs> so my son did the same thing. He was like, ooh, that's cool. And then I said to my son, and you see, Michael Raymond, that's why your homework is so important. 
Because if you want to, if you want to be successful in life, your homework is preparing you like the Navy SEALs prepared for you to be a master in life. And he was like, oh, dad. But here's, here's the point that I want to try to make. The real power in these metaphors and analogies, and especially like me raising my son, whenever I want to teach my son a life lesson, I would go into his world to find something that he already understood and related to, like he already had a belief about that. I used an existing belief he had as a child to validate the life lesson I was trying to teach him. Because then he would have to argue with his own belief system. That's the power. I'm telling you, this is tremendously powerful. And uh, I'll tell you something. My son, he brought up a metaphor I taught him. 21 years old, he brought up a metaphor I taught him when he was 15 years old. He never forgot it. So, so going back to the listing appointment, when you're in front of the homeowner, you're using their belief system to validate working with a realtor. And let me tell you something. You're going to get, when you use their job as the metaphor for being a real, or hiring a realtor, like you make it up on the spot, now you're a hooper. Now you've mastered the conversation. All right, so let me show you this, this price objections. So when my son, he was trying to teach me this Xbox game, he said to me one time, he said, Daddy, be careful, there's a guy around the corner. Like my son knew the game so well, he knew what was around the corner before I could see it, and he was prepared. In real estate, it's the same thing. The guy around the corner, when you go on a listing appointment, might be, hey, our house is nicer, we did all these improvements. Now, I already demonstrated that with Dominique. Is it possible you go on a listing appointment, they say, my house is nicer, we did all these improvements, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So you should have at least two metaphors to handle that one. I already gave you the dollar bill technique when I demonstrated it with Dominique. Here's another one. We can always come down later. Do they ever say that to us, yes or no? We need the money because of what we owe. Why do they owe that money? Probably because they refinanced, took it out or something, or they, right? But you can't explain them. You can't handle objection with logic. It has to be through emotion. Here's another one. We need the money because the house we're buying. Oh, so you want the buyer to pay you more for your house. So in a sense, they're buying you your new home. You can't say that. If you said that to a seller, what would happen? Help me out. Yeah, there's a door. They, they, here's the door. They throw you out. So you've got to do it around with a metaphor analogy. Here's the last one. The other agent said we can get more. Oh, really? Are they going to pay you for it if it doesn't sell? You can't say that to them. So you need to handle each one of these with a metaphor analogy. Do me a favor. Take a picture of one of these. Those of you that didn't get the CD, you need to. We don't have time for me to teach all these to you. So you need to think about what metaphors or analogies you can use to handle these objections. Those of you who got the CDs, don't worry about taking a picture. That is the Price It Right CD. OK, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to change the slide. All right, here's the next thing that we're going to cover is the actual listing appointment. So what we've done is we've taken the listing appointment, and I call it a listing conversation, not a presentation, because I don't want you to be salespeople. I want you to communicate. And um, what we did is we took the listing appointment and created an acronym. We took the word REAL because I want you to be more authentic. I want you to be more uh, talking from your heart. And the reason why we have Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers on there is because I always believe when I was an agent, a listing appointment is just like a dance. You know, I told you, you know, I had the white capizios. They, actually, they used to call me Disco Daryl because that was true. Well, well, I like to dance. Well, I like to dance. And uh, when you're learning how to dance, what does a dance instructor teach you? What do they teach you? Basics. They teach you steps, right? They teach you, in New York, I call them moves. Yeah. All right, but anyway, so you're taught steps. Now, if you go on a dance floor and you only know of a couple of steps, are you going to look good? No. No, you're not. If you only know a couple. So the more you got, the better you look on the floor. Yeah. All right, now which ones you use, how often you use them, are influenced on a few things. What influences, so watch this. You go onto a dance floor with the moves. I'm, I'm sorry, the steps. What influences what steps you're going to use on the floor? The music. So the tempo, the tempo, the speed, yeah, the song. What else? Yeah, well, even if you're following or leading, like there's a synchronization, right? So they both know, right? So there's a communication there. But definitely your, uh, your partner, whether you're on the following or the leading, your partner. Okay, what else? Your comfortability, like there's going to be dance steps that you like more than others, so you might lean to those more, right? Well, that's the listing appointment. See, the listing appointment, the dance floor is the kitchen table. 
Who's your partners here? The sellers, right? Uh, the tempo, the speed, is when do they have to move? Like somebody has to move in a week is different than a year. So there's a speed, right? And what are your dance steps? <laughs> your metaphors and analogies. The more of those that you have, the Kelly Blue Book, the director's technique, and the, the more of those dance steps you have, the better control you are on the dance floor. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So now, by the way, I just used the metaphor to teach the power of metaphors. And that's a dance, right. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take it into routine. We're going to R stands for rapport, which is you want to build that connection. <laughs> You want to build that connection with the homeowner. I'm laughing because I just remembered this story. Can I tell you a funny story? Yes or no? Yes. So this woman, she's upset. She goes to a pharmacist. She hollers across the counter to the pharmacist. She said, I need a bottle of cyanide. <laughs> she's, the pharmacist said, what, man? She said, I need a bottle of cyanide. The pharmacist said, for what, man? She, she said, to kill my husband. <laughs> He said, to kill your husband, man, I can't do that. You go to jail, I go to jail. Well, this woman, she goes to her, into her purse. She takes out a photo of the pharmacist's wife having sex with her husband. <laughs> so, the, so the pharmacist looks. He says, ha, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a prescription. <laughs> so you can always find something to build rapport. <laughs> So now, so we're going to build rapport. Listen, some of us are really horrible at building rapport. You want to know why? Because we're stressing out about how we're going to present price and commission. So we're, relax. Because let me tell you something. If they don't like you, <laughs> they ain't listening with you. If they don't like you, price and commission will be a non-issue. So when you look at this, there's four parts. You might think each one is worth 25%. In my opinion, that first part represents at least 50%. So don't worry about nothing except building that relationship, building that rapport. Once you feel you built that rapport, you want to go back to the kitchen table as soon as possible and engage them. How do you engage somebody in a conversation? How do you do that? Questions. Asking questions, focus on them. There's another reason why we're asking questions. Here's the old sales technique that I don't want you to use. I want you, you ask questions to find a problem so you can offer a solution. That's not what I teach. What I teach is you ask questions to find out what they're committed to. So you can coach them based on their commitment. See, I like that better. What do you think? Yes? Yeah. I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to answer it wrong. <laughs> and now I'll fix you again. When a homeowner lists with you, you're the listing agent. Tell me, holler it out. What is the end result the homeowner is committed to? What is the end result the homeowner is committed to? Their money. Selling the house. The money. Anybody else? Is that pretty? Do you agree with that? Yes or no? Yes, yes that's wrong. Let me cover this. Now, when I cover this, you're gonna, you, I know you know what I'm about to say, but we forgot it somehow. Like, we get licensed and we forget this. So most of us would say, our job as the listing agent is to sell their house or get them the most money, and those are two horribly wrong things. See, you've heard this expression, if these walls could. Oh. The, for a homeowner, this is their most important thing. You know, Maslow's theory, hierarchy of needs, after food and water comes shelter. When you think about what's happening, these people are not selling a house, they're selling a home. And what's happening here is you really get, think about this and get yourself out of the whole sales thing. What's really happening is that people are leaving the comfort of their home going to an unknown. Yeah, I got that they may know it's a job transfer. I know that they may have already picked out the house. Like, not figuratively like they know, but like there's a lot of questions, fears, and concerns that go with this whole uprooting their life starting all over. I mean, when you think about what's happening, people are closing a chapter in their life, starting a whole new chapter. See, really what's happening here is people are moving from point A to point B in their life. For these people, they're actually going to their next level. This is a new life that they are inventing and committed to having happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes? What you and I do is much more than just sell houses. What we do is actually help people get from point A to point B in their life. Selling the house is not the end result. Nobody sells a house just to sell a house. They're selling the house because of a reason. It's not the end result. It's a means to a bigger end. And when you say your job is to sell a house, you're minimizing the profound impact you're having in other people's lives. 
Really, what you do as a listing agent is you help change people's lives, much more than just listing and selling. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Now, when you bring this to the conversation, now you're not selling. Now you're serving. Now you're really coaching people. You know, listen, I'm a, I'm a coach for real estate agents. Agents pay us through the power program, whatever, for me to coach them. I want you to leave here today looking at yourself as a, a licensed coach in the state of Texas to coach buyers and sellers. That's your job. Your job is to help people coach them through the maze to get them from point A to point B to their next level. And if you start to do this, you'll sell less, but you'll serve more and you'll have more money and you'll feel better about yourself and it'll seem less stressful and, and less work for you. Does this sound good? Yes? yes? All right. Now, with that said, so you're going to find out what they're committed to because your job is to give them advice. Now, that's the next part. The advice part is where you're actually going to talk about the listing uh, part of how we do what we do to help them get to their next level. You know, what's the plan that we do that we help our sellers get to their next level in their life? Well, we put on an MLS. Let me tell you why this powerful thing. It's like a mall of a shoe store is on its own versus being in the mall. A mall is going to attract more people and powers. And then you go through the metaphors for MLS. You know, when I talk about brokers and open house, it's kind of like, you know, a fashion show. You know how they have a fashion show? They, buyers come, they look at the line, they like it, they bring it back to their store. That's what, anyway, you'll go through each one of those metaphors for MLS, uh, brokers, open house, public open house. And if you do a great job, they're going to stop you, and then you're going to list and leave and get the hell out of there before they change their minds. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys learning anything, yes or no? You know, it's hard for me, as much as I try, I try and take 27 hours of material and cram it into three, I just can't do it. But this is helping you, yes? yes. All right. Here's the last thing I'm gonna cover with you is that we gotta stay more positive in our business. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes. Let me tell you something. I don't care how positive you think you are, if you let people influence you uh, negatively, it will influence, you'll be negative. I'm gonna show you a scientific experiment how we have to keep negative away and keep positive in. This word is yelp. Everybody, what's the word? Yelp. No, no, everybody say the word. Yelp. Yelp. Say it again louder. Yelp. Yelp. What we're going to do is a scientific experiment. I, yeah, I want you to say that word, yelp. Everybody, what's the word? Yelp. We're going to say it five times. Now, after the fifth time, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to holler out the answer. Let me review the assignment, because I feel like I need to do that here. <laughs> So everybody, what's the word? Yeah. We're going to say it how many times? Five. And I want you to say it with enthusiasm. With what? Enthusiasm. And after the fifth time, I'm going to ask you a question. Holler out the answer. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on, are you ready? Yeah. Let the staff here think that we're having a religious meeting, okay? Here we go, five times, nice and loud. Yelp, 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 yelp. What's the white part of the egg? Yelp. The white part of the egg? Yelp. The white part of the egg? The, the yolk is the yellow part. You see how, see, you see how easy you are? What is the white part? Egg white. Egg white. I had somebody say albuma. I was like, whoa, you're weird. Okay. So now watch this. This is what happens. When you're, let's say when you're being positive, let's say, who's new again? Raise your hand, the new people. Where are the new people? Okay. <laughs> What's your name? What's your, Julie. Julie? Oh, thank you. A normal name. Okay. <laughs> Julie, let's say, how long have you been licensed? Two months. Two months. <laughs> okay. So let's say Julie's going to have her first closing today. Is she excited? Yes or no? Yes. Now watch this. I'm negative Ned in her office. I've been in real estate for like 150 years. And I have a drinking problem. So I see how, Ju how happy Julie is, so I'm going to go straighten her out. Now, Julie, don't be so excited. The, the deal is still fall apart. <laughs> And if you need anything, I'll be here all day. You can call me. And by the way, sh I heard the brokers thinking about firing you. OK, now, what did I just do to this poor girl? Help me out. I deflated her. I did worse than deflate her, because what happened is I planted a negative seed in her head, right, a thought. She's going to be driving to the close and thinking about what I just said. And she's going to leave the close and thinking about what I said. Now, the more she thinks about it, it's like watering a seed. What happens when you water a seed? Gross. It grows. So I'm going to give you a technique to keep all the negative influences and all the bad people that want to plant bad seeds in your head. Do you want it? Yes or no? Yes. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Now, here's how this works. Yeah. 
The next time you get a negative person, they come up to say, oh, the market, of the academy, of the broker, the, the president. <laughs> Don't try and fix them. That's God's job. <laughs> if he can't do it, you certainly can't. <laughs> All right? So here's what I want you to do. Next time you have somebody coming up to you, you go, oh, the market there, don't try and help them or say anything. Just say these two words in their face. Bad seed, bad seed. <laughs> okay, let's role play this now. Let's say I'm negative net. I come to you and say, oh, the market, oh, the economy. Everybody give it to me. Bad, bad seed, bad seed. Bad yeah, you got to give two shots with your hands. One more time. Bad, bad seed, bad, bad seed. seed. I promise you they'll go in the opposite direction. <laughs> My name is Daryl Davis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.